Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we are swapping out those old, well, they're not so much old, they just don't look really well. They, the truck steers fine, but we're swapping out the steering stabilizers for a set of Fox 2.0 steering stabilizers. So this is a 2014 Ram 2500. So this kit works from 14 to 18. Um, I don't even think I've made a video yet showing this truck. Um, let me go ahead and flip you around real fast and I will do a quick walk around. Okay, so here we have it. This is the Fox 2.0 kit, um, which is uh, BDS or it has the BDS brackets, I guess, because I think there's another brand. I mean, you can put Fox shots on whatever set of brackets you want. Um, I was able to pick this set off of, up off of, e uh, I'm sorry, walmart.com for $440 before shipping and tax. So it was like $80 cheaper than eBay and Amazon. So when it comes to the truck, um, I flew down to Houston, Texas about three months ago and I picked this truck up. So it's a 2014 Laramie Longhorn Cummins. It has 150,000 miles on it. Now it has 157. Um, it did not have the front bumper. Um, which we will talk about that. It also didn't have the towing mirrors, but it did have the lift kit and the wheels. These wheels are 37, 12 and a half on 20s. Uh, the wheels were brand new and you can see it has the Fox 2.0 reservoir shots on it. Um, super cool, super cool lift. Um, it also has the power steps. So when I was looking for a vehicle, there was nothing local, so I, ended up taking the wife and she flew for the first time so we flew down to houston and in the photos that the sales guy sent me it did not look as big this is a massive truck um it does clear uh when i forward or backwards when i pull it into the garage due to the angle of the driveway um i did add the gen y hitch um i believe this is the 12 inch drop with a 16K towing. I added the stabilizer. I added the um, step. Uh, I think that's about maybe $800 to $1,000 for that hitch. Um, I also added a Gator truck bed. I had a camper shell on it, kind of didn't think about it, and it did not fit in the garage. So I ended up selling that and put the bed cover on it. Um, I did end up deleting it. Uh, put a four inch straight pipe. I did have a muffler on it. It was right there. Um, I had a muffler on it. I chose to take it out just so it would be a little bit louder and I could roll a little bit more coal if I wanted to. Um, it did not have the tow mirrors on it, but I chose to add the tow mirrors. Passenger side, power steps. It has the Laramie Longhorn interior super 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 nice truck um i let me go to the other side when i said i deleted it other people were saying that they could delete it for a lot cheaper but with this truck being a 14 uh i guess up to 13 it was a whole lot easier for the tuner to delete it but it is deleted. Um, I did add a, I don't remember the brand of this, S and B I think is what it is, cold air intake. And I guess I have a leaf in there. Okay, um, that is my winch controller. I have it black taped up and I, I have some of the uh, wire protector wrapped around the bottom of it. I will talk about that a little bit more in a second. But there's the engine. Um, it did have the, uh, HDP hose connector on it. Um, I do have wires plugged into the factory uplifter switches. So I didn't do a whole lot to this truck yet. I added the mirrors, added the bed cover, the hitch, and I also added this bumper. So this is the Fab Four. I honestly forget the name of it. I will have to look it up uh, because honestly, I forget. Um, but I do have a 12,000 pound Badlander winch in there, um, which 
they basically said you couldn't do with a full-size light bar. So that's a 30 inch rigid uh, green backlight. Um, so that's the Radiance series and also the pod lights. Um, I was able to make it fit by moving the controller up into the battery area. Um, super, super sturdy um, bumper. I really like it. Um, we bought it to match the front of my wife's Jeep, which has the Grumper, which we have videos of that if you're interested in seeing how, or I guess seeing more about the Jeep. Super cool Jeep. Um, so our vehicles kind of fit together, um, but super cool there. Um, the thing is, you see those steering stabilizers a lot, and I don't see a brain on them. And so they're really kind of chipped up with rock chips. So I'm gonna swap them over to the Fox 2.0. That was kind of the big thing I wanted to do with this truck was put the bumper on it, the steering stabilizer. Um, that's about it. I mean, there's not a whole lot more. Uh, probably not my preferred wheel package. I probably would have done deeper wheels and I might have done chrome, but with the two-tone, two that makes it a little bit harder uh, to have big chrome wheels but super cool truck. So now that we've talked about the truck, I'm gonna go ahead and get that kit off. And then I will walk you guys through how simple this kit is to get it installed. Hey guys, I was able to get this off. And what I did not notice before, this is Fabtech. So uh, pretty, pretty simple design. It had a uh, basically like a U-bolt on each side. While the new kit uses the factory holes in the tie rod end. That's what goes here. And um, yeah, okay, well, let me get some of the packages open and then we will start bolting things up. Well, I already ran into my first problem, but I made it work. So I got the first step, which said to get this bracket installed. So I start looking through the bolts and I start reading through it and I start checking all my bolts and I notice that it says in the instructions that you would be reusing right there, re, uh, mounting the stern stabilizer bracket, reusing factory hardware. Well, I do not have factory hardware with those. So I had to come up with two bolts that would go through that. So I started playing around with, I left it over there. Um, one of these bolts. So this is the right size, everything that we need. So you, you would be able to use this. I think it's like three eighths, probably by three inch. Um, I ended up finding some half inch bolts that I had, but they were like six inches long. So I had to cut those off. I had to cut them before I could install them due to the fact that I don't have enough space. So those are half inch bolts now, but I was able to get that cut and get that part installed. So I left this one over here. There we go. Um, so now that we have that first step done, I was kind of reading through this. I think what we end up doing now, basically we jump to mounting this solid bracket. And what we're using are the factory bolts. Again, luckily I do have those. And then we are putting spacers in them, which are these two. So I guess we will be doing that. And then these two long bolts will be going with this bracket. So I'm gonna figure out how that fits and then I will show you guys. So now that we have the axle bracket on, you reuse your factory bolts on the bottom and the top. You do have to put a spacer right there in between the upper bolts. And then I ran the supplied lawn bolts with a nut and washer and was able to tighten those down. I did not super tighten them because they, I felt like I was already bending them. So I didn't do that. So we got that bracket on with factory bolts, but I had to make some factory bolts and then two supplied bolts. So now I believe what they want us to do uh, they want you to flip the um, tie rod adjustable sleeve. Mine, have, mine has already been flipped 
due to probably the other kit. So now I think what they want you to do is um, get the other bracket probably on loosely. And then from there, we will start mounting the shots. We do have to press the bushings in um, and then measure the passenger side and then make the driver's side match. So I'm going to go ahead and mount the other bracket with the U-bolts. The next step, I'm actually going to go ahead and press in the ends on these shots. And so I have a Harbor Freight, um, I believe it's a six ton. I keep it up in my attic. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and figure out how to set this up and press it in and I will show you guys how I do it. I was able to press this in and this end is a lot easier than this end. Basically what I did is I'm using an inch and one sixteenth. If you had an inch and an eighth, it'd be better. I'm sending it on top of this and then using my other block and I'm basically pressing it in. Um, I still have to get that in, but that slides in pretty quickly. And then I can go ahead and try to get the first one installed. Just like that, I'm able to get that one installed. So this shock is good to go. So I went ahead and I bolted the left side of the shock up. I've decided that I'm going to mount the shots in the middle and then have, or the canisters in the middle, I guess, and then the arms out on the sides. Um, before I can finish mounting that, I do need to go ahead and prep this bracket. Um, this is the BDS emblem. Um, it does say that it can be painted. I'm just gonna leave it stainless. So I have my rivet gun here. I have pulled back the edges. So I can go ahead and rivet that in and then I can get that installed. So I have it installed. I think I have it pretty much straight. What I did find out is these four bolts, two of them are different sizes. You put the two short ones in the middle and get this off. Oops. And there we have it. A little bit of residue, but there it is. Hmm. Well, it's a small change, but it's definitely something that will make me feel better about the truck. And you definitely see it. So it's definitely a really cool thing that I was able to do for such an expensive truck. It just had, I really hated that it didn't have the matching shots. So definitely super cool. Um, I don't really have any adjustment that I can do. So I measured the left side, uh, the passenger side and then I made the driver's side the same, but I'm probably going to, I don't know if I should jack up the front end and check or just have my wife come out and try to turn it and make sure nothing hits. But uh, that's basically the install. Definitely looks a lot better than those did. Something I forgot to mention and while cleaning up, I realized this, I have some extra parts. I didn't have any bolts that were this size and I don't know why I have this one. So if any of you guys know or if you think they just, you know, add extra parts for no reason. Thank you guys so very much for watching and we will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.